Okay. Well, welcome to the EEAI Vision 2020 conference. This session is part of the K-12 formal education track and is titled, Have Seeds Will Travel. Thank you to NIPSCO, Mary Lee Environmental Center of Goshen College, and the North American Association of Environmental Education for sponsoring the conference. Please mute your sound and feel free to use the chat for questions, comments, or to share something relevant to the presentation. We'll open up for questions at the end, but if you um, have a question throughout, uh, feel free to unmute yourself um, and, and go ahead and ask away. So we have Dawn Hammond with us. Uh, thanks for being here with us, Dawn. Uh, she, um, during her 26 years of teaching in Indianapolis Public Schools, she's taught in small inner city neighborhood schools, an environmental magnet school, and currently at an international baccalaureate school. At each school, she worked with students to create or revive outdoor classrooms. She conducted after school nature clubs and used project learning tree and other exploration activities. She is a district hands-on science trainer for all kindergarten teachers for eight years. Uh, she worked with kindergarten teachers on how to use notebooks paired with hands-on science activities with Purdue University and the Indiana Department of Education. Uh, in 2015, she received the Project Learning Tree Educator of the Year Award. So with that, it's all yours. All right, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone started off their day uh, really nice, enjoying a little bit of our nice weather we have. Um, I want to start with saying that um, the lesson, the activity I'm going to do is from Project Learning Tree. And my document camera that I got brought from school, the librarian gave me, decided not to start working last night. So we're going to we'll, we'll, we'll work this out still. But if you have Project Learning Tree, um, it is activity 43. Um, Stephanie is going to put it on the Whova so you can also um, print it off and see it on there also. Um, if you do not, you're not familiar with Project Learning Tree, you can um, find lots of activities and you can have training for more and even learn more about it at, um, on their website. Um, so Have Seeds Will Travel is a kindergarten through eighth grade uh, activity. It can, be, it can go a little farther than that if you wanted to go into research and such with older students. Um, it has uh, the objectives are that students will sort or classify plant seeds that they have collected. Students will identify varying methods of seed dispersal and students will model or design seeds that use varying methods of dispersal. It's just kind of in a nutshell, but it kind of goes out from there. Um, so to start, students would um, either, there are several different ways you can do this. Um, at different schools that I've been at, we've either had a lot of land where we could collect seeds or we've had all surrounded by cement. And we had to be a little creative on how we brought seeds in. But we have done things with um, putting an old sock over one shoe and taking students out and walking in a um, kind of a grassy or a wooded, little bit of a wooded area and collect seeing what seeds might stick to that and then taking that in and using those. We've also gone to where I might give them um, a baggie or a paper bag to go around and collect seeds, maybe at home bring some in um, or go around the schoolyard. Or if that's not possible, I've also um, had to bring in seeds that um, I collected myself and just kind of disperse some throughout. So every student has a few seeds and then we kind of just do a whole class sorting and classifying all together. So there are lots of different ways that you can kind of vary this activity depending on what your, your access is to outdoor areas with seeds. Um, so, one thing is to keep in mind that misconceptions are totally fine in this activity because especially with younger children you want to make sure that you're keeping their interest and if they bring in something such as maybe a pine cone and say this is a seed you may have to maybe talk about a little bit later as to how that carries the seeds or it releases the seeds or such but for this activity um, we can go ahead and just leave that to the side and maybe make another activity later about those types of seeds. Um, so to get started, I went ahead and collected seeds and brought in. And the first thing students would do is they would take out all their seeds and carefully just lay them out. And I'm gonna turn this so that, since my camera's not working, so, so you can see the seeds that I've collected. So I have a variety of seeds here. Um, some are so tiny, some are bigger, and that's okay. 
Students will bring in lots of different things that they find. Um, and then the students are going to have a big piece of paper or a piece of cardboard um, that they can kind of maneuver on and try to sort them into categories. You may have already talked about how things are classified or how sorting might happen in math or in science in different areas of academics already. So now you're going to take it into nature and how can we sort the seeds. So one way that I put that students might sort um, that I've had younger students sort is they like an easier one here is they've sorted and they've labeled it floats in the air or it doesn't float in the air. So they would go ahead and move these around and lay them out as to how they think they would move. If they're going to float in the air or not float in the air. And if they're wrong, if they're not correct on there, that's okay. It's whatever they might be thinking. So we'll say that maybe those little ones float in the air. And maybe they think these that they call helicopters or the, the maple from the maple trees and these are from the tulip trees. Maybe they see them floating floating down, but they float, we know they float differently than this, but that's okay also. It's all in how they're perceiving and you're at least getting them thinking and asking questions about things that they're noticing. Observation is the key. Um, so they're going to then share with each other, with a partner and in social distancing, what we've been doing is just having them maybe sit on the floor where you can see a little bit better and they're still at their distance, but they can still see each other's uh, papers and then maybe just sharing. Well, I put mine in floats in the air and, and doesn't float in the air and this is what I put and this is why I think this. And maybe they drop some from, the, from up above and watch how it floats down um, or floats a little bit farther away from them. Um, just to kind of show with their, their partner or their neighbor why they thought um, what they observed with their seeds and why they put them in their certain uh, classifications. <clears throat> so the next thing you would want to talk about is what is a seed? So as your students have these sorted, have them looking at them and what is a seed? What are we looking at here, boys and girls? Um, and maybe you'll have some ideas to, to jot down. I like to make a lot of charts. Um, it doesn't necessarily recommend that there, but it's great because then they can refer back and it kind of encourages some students who maybe are a little reluctant to say anything um, as to, oh, well, they said some things and they didn't say that they were wrong, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, so maybe they'll say, um, well, seeds can be round and they can be hard, okay? Um, well, seeds can be soft and they can float and they have these, they can have fluffy things. They can be tiny, they can be uh, big. Some see, and maybe somebody will say, there are some seeds that you can eat. Maybe none that we have right here in front of us, but I know at home that I, in my lunch on my strawberries, there are some seeds on the outside, or there are um, apples. When I eat my apple, sometimes I might accidentally eat a seed or a watermelon seed. So there are different types of um, levels of uh, knowledge that you might have in your classroom. And that's okay. That's great to share all of that or in your group that you have. Um, the next thing you'll want to talk about is, what is the seed for? Why do we have all of these seeds? Why do plants produce all of these? And they might come up with lots of different ideas. Um, why do you think our seeds are all so different? And just kind of wait for some, some, um, some ideas. It's a great conversation starter as to why. Why do we think this seed might float in the in the air, and this one maybe just drops to the ground. Why, why, would, the, why would they be different? So it's great just to get some, some thinking going in their heads um, at a higher level. So as we're then talking and looking at our seeds, we may also then want to kind of put this to the side and then maybe um, on a document camera or such share parts of seeds. So we've talked about what is a seed? Why do plants have seeds? Why do some travel in different ways or how do they get to where they are? Um, so another thing that I did is I soaked, one thing it recommends for an extension activity is soaking some beans and it recommends lima beans just because they're a little bit bigger and easier to see. Soak them overnight and 
um, after you soak them, they kind I picked out three that are kind of interesting. So this one actually split open on its own and you can actually see the seed coat is actually coming away from the, the inside there. And you can see a few of the parts of the seed. This one actually has some parts that are starting to come apart. So it's very interesting. The, kid, the students will think, or the children will think, wow, I never have looked at a seed so closely. This one is really cool. Um, you can see the seed coat really well coming apart. So you can also then draw a diagram either as a whole class or you can have the students do this in a science notebook and uh, talk about the parts of the seed. And if you're not familiar, one that thing that's nice about this activity is in here, on um, the second page of the activity, it actually shows you all the labeled parts. So you could take it as um, beginning basic kindergarten up to the older grades and the younger um, children, I would probably just stick to seed coat and then maybe the, um, I always say it wrong. It's the cotyledon, cotyledon, I believe, the inside part, which actually helps feed the seed. Um, and that's always an interesting part, especially if you have studied trees and how parts of trees work. Um, especially in the fall, it's a great time to start that. Um, so next, what you're going to do then, so now that you've talked about what are seeds, why do, why do plants have seeds, um, and then we've talked about the parts of the seed. So now we go back to the question of why do living, why do plants have seeds? Why would a lima bean have a seed coat and a part that feeds the seed? And then students will start um, saying, think, and the question is, yes, it is have seeds will travel, yes. Um, talking about how this is how plants grow new plants or reproduce, whatever their vocabulary might be, um, how they reproduce. Why do we think some of them have to float away from the parent plant? Um, and it might, they might come up with things, well, well, they need more sunlight, they need more space to grow, they need um, more food and more water. And if they move away from that area, then they don't have to share so much. So it's another great um, topic to just kind of brainstorm and think of some great ideas and get them thinking. You don't always have to give them the answer right away. Let them think about it a little bit and see what they um, come up with. And in a discussion, you'll be surprised at how things come together. Um, let's see. So another activity or another extension onto this is to take their seeds before they've done much of anything of attaching them to their paper, taking them and dropping them and just kind of seeing what happens, looking with their neighbor or their partner, what's gonna happen? If this is, I found this one by a tree, maybe they'll remember, and if I just drop it, what happens? It's just gonna land on the ground. What else, how else might this seed get to other places? Maybe someone will come up and say, well, I've seen a squirrel or a chipmunk eating this seed. So maybe it carried it someplace and buried it. And that's how the seed got planted. So if you keep building on their knowledge, um, on their prior knowledge, it will uh, be a great, it really adds to the activity. So we have acorns, acorns we find around trees. Maybe someone will say, well, I've seen deer at my house eating the acorns underneath our tree. So then how would the acorns get from place to place possibly? Or how would other seeds get from place to place if animals are eating them? Or maybe the birds when they're eating seeds, um, how could they get from place to place? Maybe some students will say, well, then maybe they just drop them. Or maybe when they um, go to the bathroom and they drop them, maybe they're still in there and they can grow that way. So it's a great um, way to list and talk about how different um, seeds get in different places, making your list. Then once they have their seeds, their, your list made, you can go ahead and start sort, they can start sorting their seeds. So one thing, I went ahead and made a list of some things that students might come up with. So as we're talking about our seeds, we might say, oh, well, I noticed that um, there are some seeds that just float. 
there were some seeds that stick. We have some right here that actually stick to maybe fur or to our pant legs while we're out walking. And um, I've heard some uh, people before call them hitchhikers because they're actually grabbing on to something else and then they drop off later or we brush them off or the other and the animal might actually pull them off of their fur and then drop them and that's where they'll start to grow. Um, they might just drop from where they are and they might just grow close to their parent plant. Um, as we talked, some birds and other animals, when they eat them, they might be from an animal drops it or buries it. Um, an animal plants it, might be in their scat, might be in, um, you know, on their fur, lots of different things. Animals really help plants a lot. There are also some plants that disperse their own seeds, such as witch hazel is one that is actually an example in the activity. And in witch hazel, it actually um, kind of it describes it as pushing out or shooting the seeds out, and it pushes it away from the parent plant so that it can have some room to grow also. Um, I'm seeing some chats coming in, so let me check really quick. Yes, like jewelweed. Jewelweed is a really cool one. Um, I took a kindergarten class one time out at um, Holiday Park and they, were, they had a lot of jewelweed there at that time when we went and the students were amazed. Everyone wanted to touch one and see what happened. All right, so now that students have their, um, they're gonna go ahead and sort their seeds, how they think they will um, be traveling and then they're gonna go ahead and label. So I were a student and I had mine. I could push my, have my chart here. And I'm gonna start with some little tiny ones here, which actually, as I look closely at them, have little prickles sticking out on them, which I am, and like I said before, misconceptions are okay. You can always talk those through a little bit later um, it doesn't have to be perfect because we don't want to discourage them from um, just thinking outside the box. So here could be a, um, this one's going to drop. Maybe they brought one from a sweet gum that maybe has the seeds inside, but that's okay. Um, lots of different, lots of different seeds. One thing um, that I also mentioned is that these types of activities can be used in um, different academic areas. So sorting is a great um, standard uh, demonstrate uh, thing to talk about. It's in a lot of grade levels for sorting and classifying at different levels and carries through from grade level to grade level. And so this would be a great um, activity you could put in into your math section of um, classifying and diff different way to classify on that. Does classifying and sorting shapes and and different items for math, but what about going out to nature and also sorting some different things? Let's see, we're gonna put some. So one student may say, well, I have some and maybe an animal's gonna plant this and carry it, but maybe it's also just gonna drop to the ground. So. If I have more than one, can I put it in two different areas? And that, that would be up to you, but I, I would say, sure, that is perfectly fine to put it in two different areas because it could be planted in a couple different ways. All right, and then I, I have had students go ahead and a glue stick works really well if they put it on really thick. Liquid glue also does, it just gets really messy, um, especially with little kids, they'll end up with uh, seeds sticking to their hands and everything else. So the glue stick always works really well if they just put it in um, chunks and stick the seed on. It will usually stick really well. That also works really well with leaves um, if you're making leaf activities also or sorting leaves. Um, let's see. So after students have put all of these in, then they're gonna share again. Um, I always like to have, have students share with more than one person just so they can get a 
um, a sense of what some other people are more than one other person is thinking. So they might turn to one side and share, especially right now with our social distancing, we've been sharing as to, well, turn to this person and share for um, you know 10 minutes, and then we'll ring the bell and we'll turn to this side and we'll share for 10 minutes so that they can, they're talking with two different people and they're getting two different sets of seeds um, and discussions from other people, which is always great also. Um, let's see. For older students, uh, one suggestion that's in the activity is for students to create their own seed. You can give them a variety of items, um, popsicle sticks, cotton balls, whatever you can kind of re um, recycled items that they could use that would be um, not wasteful and create a seed. And then they have to put some characteristics about their seed. How is it going to travel? Um, is it going to be food for an animal? Is it going to be um, food for people? Is it going to be um, something that will grow fast? Will it grow slow? What will it need to survive? What kind of sunlight does it need? Um, so there are lots of different, uh, different varieties for that one. I thought that one sounded really interesting, especially for, for um, older children. Um, another activity that it also says in here, it actually mentions it as an assessment for older children, is to have each student select one or more seeds and then create a fictional character profile, such as, and it gives an example, maybe it's Wally Walnut, his nickname is The Nut, it talks about the height, and so they'll be, they would be measuring, um, which would be another math skill. They could maybe weigh it if you had a scale that would measure um, in ounces. Um, what are their features or their characteristics? And what is the mission of the seed? And when was it last seen? Maybe it was last seen at the supermarket shelf um, or traveling across the backyard in the, uh, in, in a, with a squirrel or such. So I thought that one was kind of fun too. Um, let's see. Another good discussion that it also talks about as an extension is that not all seeds reproduce from, from, um, from not everything reproduces from just a seed as we have picked up here. Some, some examples would be, and, and I know I've gone to the grocery store and also gotten, if you go to the produce and ask them if you can have some of the uh, produce that maybe they've taken away because it's not um, perfect or maybe it's um, a little damaged or something, they can't really sell it. And, the, and you tell them what it's for, they will sometimes give you, uh, give you some of the samples. So potatoes is an example. Mushrooms is an awesome example, and you could even grow mushrooms in the classroom. There are some kits that you can get through educational um, sites that uh, work really well. Roses also grow differently, not necessarily from a small seed, and strawberries are tubular, and all of these things are things that could be grown in the classroom also for them to just see. It might take a little while, but that's okay. They can see that seeds don't start grow the next day. I always like when I plant something with kindergarten, they come in the next day all excited and then are a little disappointed when there's nothing growing in the cup the next day. Um, yeah, onions. Yep, onions is another great one. Um, bulbs, flower bulbs, those would be another great one that you could also plant um, in, uh, in the classroom and watch them grow. That could also be a math extension. I've had um, them in a clear cup where they can see and I plant it next to the edge where they can see the, the roots and the, sh the stem both coming. And we measure with, um, they're called unifix cubes. You could use lots of different things, but they're one inch cubes and they stack together and we measure um, every day. We always do it with the amaryllis um, around this time of year because they grow so fast and it, you can actually see growth a little bit quicker, but we measure and then we keep a chart and then we keep a little writing. Everyone gets to write something each day. Um, on our big chart about what did we notice? What was any change? Did it not change? Um, what do we think the difference was? What do we think is going to happen the next day? All of those types of uh, predicting and those types of skills. Um, one other great thing that students can also do is um, they can plant some of these seeds. Maybe pick a couple of them. Have a uh, if you have one of the long. Um, uh, 
flower pot type of items that you could put if it's in a classroom or if it's something they're going to be taking home, something a little bit longer so they could spread the seeds out and maybe take popsicle sticks and kind of label uh, what they have. If they don't know the name of the seed, maybe they could just draw a picture of it so they can remember what it was that they planted there and then watch and see what happens. What, how long does it take? What kind of plants did they have grow <clears throat> out of there? Um, I've, I jotted down a few other academic areas because that's one thing that I also mentioned is how it can spread across to other academic areas. So math is sorting, counting, measuring, weighing. Um, science is movement, how things move, how far do they move. We could measure um, older students, we could even take some, um, some of these that float and we could uh, measure, have a tape already down on the ground and have them measure how far is it going to float before it lands on the ground. Um, the different characteristics and what are the characteristics for? Why would it, why does a sweet gum have the prickles all around the outside? Why does a burr, why do some stick to our clothes or to animals fur? Um, would animals eat those? Would they not eat those? Um, lots of different things. For older students also, looking around the world at different seeds, being here in Indiana, we wouldn't necessarily know that a coconut floats across um, water, and that is another way where it can land on an island or another piece of land someplace else and start growing also. Um, I saw a question about sweet gum. Can't let me see what that says. What is up with the sweet gum? I'm not 100% sure. I just know they're killer. Uh, they, they do not decompose well. Um, the seeds are inside of the spot. Um, in a classroom one time, we took these apart and there were little seeds inside. Um, but when we had one in our yard, it never um, germinated very, very well. So I'm not really sure exactly. I didn't study any more of that as to what exactly. Yeah, don't step on them, that's for sure. And their lawnmower, watch out when you're mowing. They'll come shooting out everywhere. They're lethal. Um, let's see. Um, also, I also brought some books because I also like to attach um, a lot of things with books, whether it be Nature, not nature, I like to always try to add books in it, kind of grabs their attention. So I grabbed a few that are some different ones you may not have heard of. This one is called Dandelions, Stars in the Grass. And it actually was from a school I was at previously that they closed, and so I got it from the library because I thought it was just awesome. And it talks about how, um, I'll actually put it this way. It actually starts with the dandelion flower, and then it talks about how it slowly changes to seed. They form a perfect circle, delicate and light. The wind blows them loose, sweeping them into the sky. And I love how the illustrations are so, um, they just have so many details to them to really help children really see up close. Like tiny umbrellas, they float up high. Every flying tuft the wind has freed carries with it a tiny seed. And then it goes on to talk about where it lands, where it would be the perfect place for it to land. Um, another great one is this one that's um, just seeds. It is actually from a um, publishing company called Acorn, which is um, it's got real photographs in it of lots of different seeds, different types of seeds. It's a great, um, kind of a great springboard to seeds. Um, of course, there's Eric Carl's The Tiny Seed, which is great, especially for younger children. Um, this one is called The Grand Old Tree, and it talks about a, a, um, a tree and its whole life. And it talks about, at one in the middle, it talks about how it drops seeds to start new seedlings. And at the end, when the tree has fallen and died, how that's okay though, because it will help the earth and its um, seedlings will grow and um, start again. 
this is a great book and it actually is poetry all about nature. And there are uh, poems in here about acorns, about seeds, um, about lots of different, um, lots of different things that you see, cherry blossoms. Let me see if I can find the acorn. There's even a, one about worms. So here is the poem about acorns. And it is, you must be patient if you plant an acorn and wait to see the first green shoot, the tiny leaf. Then it will grow, but slowly, slowly, slowly. So slowly you will hardly notice it. By the time you, you are grown up, it will still be small. For the tree, the years pass by as quick as thinking. But for you, the years are slow and hold a life. When you come back, you'll find the tree is still a youngster, just big enough to give a little shade. You'll hold your grandchild's hand and say, you must be patient if you plant an acorn. So this is an awesome book too for great nature, uh, for adding poetry into nature also. Oh, yep, time-lapsed videos are awesome also. We've been, I used a lot of those when I was teaching virtually in the spring with my kindergarten class after they kind of had a lot of knowledge in that last nine weeks, um, they kind of already knew how, uh, you know, we worked together as student teacher team. And I put a lot of the, the uh, time lapsed videos on for them to watch. I would read a story to them, then they would watch that and they would do an activity, of, a science activity of some sort um, in their backyard that they could use, so. Um, All right. Um, another thing is, which I don't, I have a few of the seeds that you could do this with. Some of them, if you could flat, if there are seeds that you can flatten, I've done this with leaves also and laminating either with contact, clear contact paper or um, running it through a laminator. If you have the laminator that will take thicker items, um, otherwise it doesn't work very well, but it has to be able to take thicker paper. So these types of um, small seeds, some of these, you could even laminate these so then kids could do rubbings with them and they won't get torn up. Um, they can, and the lamination will preserve them. It will even preserve a leaf. Um, and I've had that, some that I've, that were beautiful red that I laminated and they have lasted years and students are still using them which is awesome because they, uh, they don't get torn up and they can still do a leaf rubbing and find all the veins and such, which is the same in here. Um, they could find all the, the textures in the, in the seed with laminating them, so. All right, well, are there any questions at this point? You can feel free to unmute. I feel so alone sometimes. Thank you, Don. <laughs> I'll sure. make sure you're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. We're with you. We're just quiet. <laughs> I know. I love seeing all of the um, the uh, the chat questions, but like the, but like we were talking earlier, it's it's so hard to like kind of read and be part of those and respond um, at the same time. But uh, yeah, I like that. The sweet gum is a definite question. I don't know what's up with the sweet gum. <laughs> I wanted to say too, I put it in the chat, but I did um, hedge apples with my second graders. Oh, and then in the process, we learned that their seed dispersal was mammoths, which they thought was amazing. And then now that that is extinct um, and there's an actual term for it, and I always forget, it's like evolutionary ac anachronism or something like that. But mm -hmm. my, my kids at home and I have been studying it. So we looked at mangoes and we looked at different, and every time we have a big seed, we wonder if it's got a seed dispersal thing and so um, that's just a question that they keep asking now so I, I think that's probably one that you know as you go through your units um, your kids would do too like how you know does this one still have its seed dispersal when you find a great big giant seed right yeah it's it's amazing um, if, if you've never done this type of an activity with students especially with little ones they because they understand but then they don't have the the wide range of, you know, they just can't understand when it's this huge um, idea that's way out here outside of just, you know, me and my, my neighborhood and such. 
um, in my close environment, but they will like, you know, at lunch be saving their little apple seeds and then want to go or their orange seeds and go home and plant them and expect there to be, you know, in a couple of weeks, an apple tree or an orange tree or, and I just think that's so, that's um, so neat because they understand a concept, even though they don't understand totally, they do understand that, you know, they did, they, they got it. They, they did, they did got, they got the, the point that we were trying to get a, a point across and like, um, is it um, David was talking Friday and it was Friday evening when I was, we were listening to him talk. He was talking about how in children getting the enthusiasm and the excite, excitement for nature is what's really important. I think that's what I like the most. And that's what I really like about a lot of the activities that I do and how they can just fit very nicely into other academic areas. And it just sparks a whole new interest. Um, so. <laughs> I was just going to share to you, um, it's such a simple concept of saving seeds and um and sorting them and doing all that but it's one that's completely lost to people mm -hmm. we've done a program um at connor parade it was one of my favorite ones to do i just posted a picture in the sharing moments because it was one of my favorite ones to do and parents were so excited about it as well as kids and then the kids took the seeds home after they helped um get them out the sunflowers and stuff and planted them and then they came back to tell me how pretty their flowers were so um, thank you for doing this. This is fun. Sure. Yeah. I'm glad you liked it. That, that's, that just made me think that last year I was actually talking to my um, teaching partner. We've talked together for several years, even at a previous school. And now we're at this school together. And um, I was telling her, she's like, well, what lesson are you doing? I said, well, I'm doing the um, half seeds will travel. She was like, oh, do you remember we did that last year with both kindergarten classes? That would be 45 children, kindergarten all at one time. We took them all out. Um, I kind of ran it and she was kind of the the, the crowd control at the same time, just the two of us. And she said the kids were so, do you remember they were so quiet and they just loved it. They just ate it all up and, and they talked about it for weeks and kept bringing seeds and they were finding in their yard and different things. And it really made a big connection to them and they, they really liked it. So. Well, well thanks we for have, sharing your We have about. No, go ahead. Uh, 20 minutes. So we have plenty of time if people have questions or if they want to share um, some th things that they've done. Um, or um, I, I liked how there are a lot of books that were shared in the chat um, that different people have used with this. Um, so yeah, so I'd say we can open it up to discussion or, or anything like that. Conversation. I saw um, Taryn put in there that it's a, um, she, engineering, I didn't even I mean, there is the creating of your own seed and such, but even engineering and just so many, you could fit it into so many different areas and add your own extensions in as, the, as you see your students need. Mm -hmm. I know um, some people have also tried to do this activity in the spring. Um, we like maybe they're getting ready to plant a school garden or such and they're going to study seeds and then start planting the seeds and having the students help make the um, a school garden maybe or a garden at home or or whichever um, so it can be done in the spring also you just wouldn't be collecting as many seeds probably as you would in the fall but that's okay too um, you I've just got a, to something I'm doing with my um, undergraduate students um, so I've tried to start well hmm, I've kind of tried to start native seeds, but you know, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, and I've tried to stratify them in my refrigerator and they just get moldy. And um, I've been able, I've been successful with milkweed outside, um, but I have been collecting seeds. So it's hard to see with this thing. I mean, I have like bags and bags of seeds <laughs> that I'm collecting for Sarah Wolf, who asked for some native seeds. And I was like, oh boy, do I have some seeds for you? So I have like, I'm surrounded by seeds right now as we're talking about <laughs> seeds. There you go. But we have such a long break um, for Mary and I think most universities. So like we are, students are leaving at Thanksgiving um, week and they're not coming back to campus until I think school starts again the 19th of January. Um, that's a long time. And so um, I decided um, that 
a project for my interns, um, whether they are coming back next semester as an official intern or not, they're coming back to school. Um, so they get to pick their own native plant species that they want to um, try to stratify at home over the break. So I'm going to give them a list. And it was funny because I was like, I'm not sure, like some of them will be like, oh yeah, I'm going to try it. And others might be like, I don't do what? I, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. But every one of them, I was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. What species, what can we do? And I was like, oh, well, oh, okay. We're really excited about this. So I'm going to send them home with some seeds and see if they're way better at it than I am, which wouldn't take much, but. <laughs> That, that reminds me, um, there is also, when I went to um, Oregon, to the World Forestries um, Foundation, uh, we learned about it there, but um, they had a small seed bank that they, where they collected just for there, but there is actually a world seed bank, I guess, that they were talking about, and we got to go in one, and we couldn't touch anything. I felt like I was in like a special laboratory, although it was just like somebody's, it was, it was an outdoor facility, like a shed, that was a special locks and keys and everything but they had just like mason jars of just seeds and some of the seeds were over were hundreds of years old that they had saved in these jars and they kept collecting and stuff so that we would always have those plants some way to reproduce those hopefully um if those ever went extinct or something so um i thought that was just amazing i thought i never would even think of saving seeds and for plants mm -hmm. so, that's really um, cool yeah when yeah I'm there's a, a comment here from Taryn and actually, so yeah, so in my seed collecting this fall and, and winter, because well, and I've also been like doing it more because what else do I have to do? So like every, every day I'm like, hmm, what's ready? <laughs> because what else am I doing? So like I said, I'm surrounded by them right now, but um, I had an idea and Sarah Wolf, who I'm collecting a lot of seeds for, her and Mindy too, um, we were um, talking about things and all of a sudden I was like, oh, why don't we do like a, a native seed swap next for the next EEAI conference? And so I let her know and she's like, Ooh, that sounds great. So um, I think we're going to try to do a native seed swap or something. Um, I'll probably just be giving again. I'm not good at the stratifying maybe. Well, I might need something to do this winter. So <laughs> maybe I'll get better at it, but look for that for the next conference. Um, I think we're going to try to do a, um, a seed swap or a, um, I don't know, just, provide seeds for people that, that come to the conference. Uh, but that's a good point too, and maybe just collecting them in general and then um, having them available for teachers or educators that want to try to do something like that or want some seed maybe for their, um, their native plant gardens or things they have on, on their school grounds. Mm -hmm. That'd be, I saw somebody put on there like a, a little free seed library in Westfield this um, spring. And I think because of um, the quarantine and stuff, just trying to get, when they were slowly opening up things, people were planting gardens and really getting into gardening and outdoor things. And they had a free, they had a few things that people had collected, little seeds like heirloom tomatoes and heirloom, I can't even think of what the, everything was heirloom. It was so cool. Um, so my mom planted a bunch in her garden and it was, we would want to go out to her garden just to see what was growing. Yeah. She was like, what does it look like? we were as adults we were you know really <laughs> curious so it was very fun <laughs> yeah. seeds are fun they're so much fun for all they ages <laughs> yep it would be a great thing if um for any teachers at schools if you like around my school we're kind of landlocked we're in the meridian kessler downtown um area but we do have two sides of the building that have some really nice size gardens like flower gardens and then we do two box um garden vegetable gardens but um we go and when I was doing nature club, we would go around and we would do this activity and collect seeds and stuff. But one little boy said, oh, could we sort the seeds maybe and give them to people? And that was him who came up with that. And so that would be something that a classroom could even do, even in this time right now, yeah. is collect seeds and label the bags and give them to other community, you know, uh, outreach community activity or something. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. So. Well, does anybody have any um, last minute questions? Well, I guess not really last minute, but questions or, I don't know, comments? Um, I didn't want to interrupt while we were in good seed conversation. <laughs> um, but when we were discussing growing and the kindergarten kids being disappointed when things aren't growing as fast mm -hmm. as they think they should, right? I 
actually think that's one of the most important things we can be teaching. Um, mm -hmm. We live in a society where everything is instant. You mm -hmm. can microwave things in an instant. You can connect via Zoom and instantly be talking to someone. Um, like everything is happening instantaneously. And when we are trying to create people who are going to be passionate about the environment and protecting the environment, learning that the environment cannot be reproduced instantaneously and mm -hmm. how long it actually takes, I think it's one of the most important things that you can teach. Mm -hmm. is teaching that it does take time. I agree. And I think it also, Heidi, it, that's a great point. And it even just like going out for a walk in the woods or in your backyard, just appreciating that that tree took a long time to grow and get there. Um, you know, yeah, you're right. Teaching pages would be a great way to teach patience. Yes, yes. Um, I know. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say, if you are needing to go um, look for seeds and take them in because the ch children you're going to work with maybe don't have um, access to seeds at home, you know, or maybe you don't have a place where you can take them out um, and find a lot of seeds. Um, going to a nursery also can also, if you tell them, usually if you tell them what you're going to do, they're so excited that you're going to um, share this type of experience with, with children, that they will be willing to give you all kinds of things. Like I mentioned, the grocery store, the produce area, you could find lots of seeds in there. And even, um, I don't think it's a project learning tree activity. A few years ago, I did one where we did just um, things with things edible. We talked about, um, the the roots that you eat and then the the fruit the different parts of the plant that you eat and we talked about the seeds and different things and so i went and got all different kinds of produce and i said just give me whatever you have so it was kind of a potluck i didn't even know what i was going to get and we uh it was awesome the kids thought it was just they were like oh my gosh i didn't know that was i actually eat the carrot that grows in the ground and you know some things you might think well i i knew that but kids don't necessarily experience that anymore so But. Well, thank you, Don. Um, uh, like we mentioned, uh, the there's a PDF on the um, Have Seeds Will Travel activity in the Whova um, app under the session description for this one. Um, if you can't access that for any reason, let let me know, and I'll make sure that you get it. To, we we get it to you. Um, Don has put her email in the chat, so thank you for that. Um, well, I think that if there aren't any more questions or conversations, um, I'll a go comment. ahead and say thank you, Don. I have a comment. <laughs> comment. Comment away. Um, okay. I was just going to say, I was thinking of um, how you could transition this into comparing this, how seeds travel to how waste travels. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the very end, you know, once you've done the, the initial seed, the academic stuff and the fun stuff, then um, each child could bring in a piece of trash, or you, if you were in a classroom, um, or you could show different sorts of trash and just ask them, you know, how do you think this would travel? Okay. Mm -hmm. And how does it, you go into how does pollution travel? Um, so I guess you'd have to find the time to do that, or it could be like an intro to another session, a series that you do with the kids. That was just something I was thinking about. It could, it could go along, all along with the movement that you've talked about and then move it on to, yeah. Other things move too that maybe are not so great for our environment. So right. yeah, and native plants. The concept for older kids, you could talk about native plants and rewilding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. Well, thank you so much, guys. I um, I miss being in person, but it was great to just talk with people and and to share some of our common interests of nature and working with children and sharing our love of nature. Well, thanks, Don. So for everybody that joined us, please be sure to, I guess, continue discussions in Whova. Um, I don't know how long discussions are gonna be able to be had in Whova, but I know that um, all of our um, sessions are being recorded. Uh, so you'll have access to them for at least a year from now on. So that way you'll be able to see all of them, um, which is really cool. Um, make sure you fill out the evaluations online. Uh, so that we um, can make our conferences better every year. 
Um, and then also save the date for the EEAI 2021 conference at Spring Mill State Park, November 12th through the 14th. Uh, we have field trips happening this afternoon. So if you're nearby any of the field trips um, throughout Indiana, uh, go join those. If not, go field trip on your own. I think that's what I'm gonna do outside for a little bit because it's beautiful outside. Um, so thanks for joining us. Thank you, Don, that was great. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you too.